Let me start with Congressman Case. Uh, good morning, Speaker, members. Uh, aloha to all of you. Um, thank you for inviting me back uh, to update you on <clears throat> COVID-19 um, from a federal perspective, as well as um, how, it, how it all impacts us right here. Let's just start with the basics. Uh, DC right now is very chaotic and very uncertain. Uh, we've got a number of things going on right now. <clears throat> the first thing that's going on tragically is that we've seen uh, the highest record numbers for infection and deaths in, in our country, a, 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 a rapid and, and uh, accelerating uh, third spike, so to speak, uh, which has impacted the rest of our country. Uh, here not uh, yet, but uh, vigilance um, is the only thing that's gonna prevent that from happening. Um, and clearly that is, um, that is uh, um, uh, keeping many of the, the um, federal operations uh, dealing with COVID-19 in, in uh, an incredible uh, high state of, uh, of um, anxiety. Um, to add to that, we've got a um, very uncertain and chaotic uh, transition in terms of our um, presidential elections uh, that is definitely impacting uh, what's going on in Washington. Uh, not just in the White House, but uh, all down through the uh, departments themselves and the agencies of which the FDA is a critical agency in the middle of all of this. Congress itself is trying to finish our uh, current Congress, which expires on January 3rd and start a new Congress. We have some elections uncertain, which are sucking oxygen out of, of the system, uh, primarily two Georgia US Senate elections. Uh, and we have critical key issues remaining in this Congress. Uh, we have not yet uh, passed. Um, our FY21 appropriations bills. Um, we passed them out of the House in the middle of summer, uh, but they were not passed out of the um, they were not passed out of the Senate, and we are uh, trying to negotiate and pass those. We have a continuing resolution, uh, which is a fancy way of saying, well, we're busy trying to uh, get the appropriations bills uh, passed. Uh, just spend what you spent last year. Uh, it's a terrible way to budget and uh, appropriate, uh, but uh, that's the reality we're dealing with. Uh, that CR um, is um, um, uh, expiring on December 11th. And so we are facing at least the, I hope, remote prospect of a government shutdown uh, if people don't get their act together and either appropriate or extend that CR. Um, and then finally, of course, uh, we have COVID-19 itself, uh, which is um, you know, not just raging, but uh, the, the needs uh, for additional emergency assistance are critical. And if there's a bright spot in any of this, I would say that although that wasn't true four or five months ago, I don't think much of anybody in Washington is arguing over whether there should be another COVID-19 package at this point. It's just when, where, and how. Um, I'm not going to deal a whole bunch with CARES uh, because um, other people on the call will talk with you about uh, uh, CARES and the status. Uh, I'll just uh, observe a couple of things. Um, of course, we've seen about uh, about um, about 10 billion plus come into the, uh, come into Hawaii thus far from CARES. It was a very uh, very uh, critical and needed uh, piece of legislation, but it is expiring, and many of its provisions are creating cliffs of one kind or another of which uh, one that you are all are particularly concerned about is, is the state and local government funding, the 1.25 billion to the state um, and to the city and county of Honolulu and indirectly to the counties since the state shared part of its uh, uh, provision uh, with the counties. And that money um, has to be um, um, incurred, quote unquote, uh, not expended, but incurred, uh, which is somewhere between obligated and expended for all of you budget people. Uh, by the end of this year at present under the CARES Act, um, and neither the state nor the city and county of Honolulu have in fact uh, met uh, that deadline to date. Um, that deadline is only a, a few weeks away. So of course there's um, understandable high anxiety about whether that money will actually uh, satisfy CARES. Um, the, uh, we've been in touch with both the city and county and the state uh, repeatedly uh, on this issue. We think we've communicated uh, what the actual requirements are. We've checked with the treasury again this morning uh, in Washington about uh, about the state's plan B, which is to, um, if, it, if for whatever amounts, it is not actually incurred by the end of the year. Um, and if the CARES Act deadline is not extended uh, by then, uh, the state's plan B, of course, is, is to pay down its federal debt in unemployment. And that's a decision for you all to make at the state uh, level, uh, executive and legislative. The city has 
uh, its plans and it has its own plan B. I'm not sure whether the city has talked about its plan B uh, yet, but nonetheless, I'm personally comfortable that um, that these um, <clears throat> that these monies are not going to be you know required to be uh, refunded refunded to Treasury in the worst case scenario that we did not um, extend that deadline. <clears throat> so to to the Heroes Act now, and by heroes, it's just my way and most people's ways in Washington of referring to the second large emergency assistance package. Uh, we passed the Heroes Act out of the House six months ago now, over six months ago, realizing that we were going to need an additional emergency assistance package. We passed it out at the range of about three trillion dollars. Um, for a couple of months, uh, both the Senate and the administration did not agree um, that there should be an additional uh, package. But as I said earlier, uh, we're pretty much uh, over that bridge at this point. However, uh, there is still a huge uh, gap um, in terms of um, exactly what, what final amount uh, should be passed and um, where it should go and when that should be done. Um, the range is, uh, in terms of total amount, is somewhere in the range of uh, 2.2 trillion to 1.6 uh, trillion. Um, so, I mean, the range itself is, is uh, much more narrow than at the beginning. Uh, there continues to be quite uh, major policy differences as to where that money should go. I think that um, there's a pretty broad consensus that uh, it should go uh, in part uh, to additional direct economic uh, payments to uh, uh, needy American citizens, as with the first uh, one, uh, that it should go to assist uh, uh, small businesses and uh, particularly hard hit uh, sectors of our, of our economy, uh, <clears throat> the major stumbling block, and it should go to um, um, our, our healthcare system, uh, particularly um, to um, um, frontliners and uh, PPE. <clears throat> but um, the major stumbling block is state and local government funding still. There's just a fundamental position that I do not agree with at all that, that we should not be funding state and local governments anymore. Um, and I think, we're, I think we will surmount that uh, negotiating um, um, uh, uh, you know, gap. Uh, but again, I, I cannot represent to you right now um, you know, when that's going to be, how it's going to be, or how much it's going to be. And anybody that tells you that they know what, what the outcome is going to be um, is, is just not looking at the facts. And so all I can give you is an educated guess, um, which has been what I've been trying to pass along to you for the last couple of months, um, that uh, we will have a package. Um, I think that it is possible, not probable, that it would come before the end of the year. It would take a lot of heavy lifting to get it. It's possible that in some of these uh, uh, areas where we have some consensus, we would, we would, uh, you know, divide it up into segments and pass them independently. And some of the, you know, uh, less controversial ones, we would, we would go ahead and 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 pass. Um, but the more controversial ones would have to probably await um, a later date. We don't know, um, frankly, whether uh, this president uh, would even sign uh, such a bill. He's shown a willingness to do it in the past. Uh, but uh, we're, we're in a new world uh, right now with respect to uh, the president's um, focus on the job and um, what he may or may not do and for what reasons. And so it's a highly unpredictable uh, situation. Uh, again, I, I think it's going to happen, but I don't know when or where or how much. Um, and so uh, the bottom line is um, we're going to have to deal with this uncertainty for some time, um, whether it's you know three or four weeks. Uh, we do go back, as you can tell, I'm back in Honolulu for this week, but then back in DC for two to three more weeks. Uh, we've all been told uh, to, to, to assume that we're gonna stay there when we go back uh, on, um, if, a, if, a, if a, a deal is imminent or, can, or we can get there um, even over the Christmas holidays. So there's a, I think there's a commitment to doing it, but exactly when this is gonna spring loose, I don't know. And so um, I think from your perspective, uh, uh, the best that I can tell you right now, it is going to be uncertain for, for at least a number of weeks here. And we all have to have our plan Bs uh, for anybody to rely upon additional federal government uh, funding um, to the detriment of, of other alternatives. Um, I, think, I don't think that's the right approach. Uh, so that's my, that's my counsel to you on that. We'll keep you informed as much as we can. I think I'll spend, uh, Speaker, uh, just a little bit more time before, before I go wherever you want to go. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, vaccines, because um, that is, of course, critical um, to COVID-19 overall, and it's absolutely critical to, to um, our own attempts uh, here 
uh, not only to stabilize our, our, our public health um, and avoid any worsening and start to improve it, but it is critical uh, to any realistic, I think, reopening of, um, of, of our uh, visitor uh, economy at all. Um, as you all have know from, <clears throat> from the uh, media reports, a number of uh, uh, private uh, pharmaceutical companies have, have um, uh, believed that they have tested a, 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 an efficacious, as they say, uh, vaccine uh, that, that could work. Um, there are uh, a couple, but the process here is that usually uh, when you um, test out a vaccine and get, get to the right uh, level of results um, from, a, from a positivity basis, an efficiency basis, as well as a as as well as a potential harm basis, is there's usually a much longer uh, process for getting uh, approval from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. Um, but there is a process called emergency use author authorizations, uh, under which for for true emergencies you can accelerate um, um, that that uh, use and distribution, and that's the process we're in right now. Uh, the very first uh, company that um, got into an emergency use authorization was Pfizer and uh, BioNTech. Um, they went in for an emergency use author authorization. The meeting of the FDA, it goes through an advisory committee of, of um, hopefully experts of throughout the country to take a look at the actual science. Um, that's called the Vaccine and Related Product Advisory Committee. Uh, that meeting is scheduled uh, of that uh, committee uh, for the next uh, a couple of weeks. Um, by December 10th, we expect, um, at, at present at least, we expect that that, that committee will, will have taken a look and decided whether to issue the emergency youth authorization. The FDA still has to do it after that. So the FDA has to take a look at, okay, do we agree with the committee? So, but um, I guess best case scenario from, uh, from at least from a, from a speed perspective, and, and certainly it should be from a public health perspective, is somewhere around December 10th, we may have a vaccine that would start to be distributed uh, throughout the country. Now, it's one thing to approve, of, and by the way, and there are two other companies that have also um, announced their results publicly. You've heard about them. AstraZeneca and Moderna, um, and they um, expect to go in for an emergency youth authorization uh, very, very soon. So we've got probably three vaccines that are in that track that we know about uh, credibly uh, right now. There's other companies that are that are certainly uh, pursuing them, but this is kind of the first wave. Um, we still have to, of course, produce it and distribute it, uh, and um, that's the so-called Operation Warp Speed. Uh, which is the administration's uh, plan uh, to enter into larger scale production and distribution so that it gets out there fairly efficiently uh, to the country. Uh, the CARES Act uh, requires that those vaccines uh, be, be um, by and large provided uh, free of cost. Um, the first, of course, you know, you can't just, you know, vac vaccinate um, hundreds of millions of Americans uh, overnight. And so there's some priority. And um, states themselves are are uh, putting together their their uh, vaccination plans um, uh, here in Hawaii. The Department of Health has has a draft of vaccination plan that I, I believe they briefed you on, uh, Dr. Char and her team um, that um, that uh, calls for uh, any vaccinations uh, received uh, to be directed as I think is appropriate first and foremost uh, to. I really the, the folks that are on the front lines. So, so our, our first uh, our first responders, our, our police, our firefighters, our our um, you know paramedics, our our folks in the hospital, the folks that are at the greatest risk, and uh, as well as as um, um, in our general population at the greatest risk, uh, which on balance would be um, the more elderly uh, folks in, in in situations that are that are risky to start with. Uh, so that um, you know that um, I think I think. From my perspective, obviously, we want um, a, 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 a safe vaccine to be approved by the FDA that, that um, people will trust to take. Um, and I think um, we're going to have to uh, see what the FDA has to say about these. I, I hope and believe that they're going to they're apply science uh, to, their, to, to their deliberations. Um, and I think it's critical, obviously, that we get that approval um, as long as we can satisfy the public that they're safe and to get that distribution out. We have specific issues here in Hawaii that you all are more familiar about than me, but uh, that I have been involved in with my office. Um, 
uh, for example, um, uh, how do you distribute uh, vaccinations um, uh, fairly to, to, to the more rural parts of our uh, state? Uh, do you need you know, large uh, you know, refrigerators? Uh, um, there's, there are many logistical issues to be worked out. My sense is that the uh, Department of Health has a pretty good handle on, on you know, what exactly is needed. Um, uh, I understand that they will be, um, 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 although I don't believe that their plan is subject to approval per se by the FDA, and I, I can be corrected on this, I think certainly it would be a good idea to get external uh, views. Final thing I'll mention before I get off uh, that I think is important to know, and that is that, um, and, and some of you on the call may be way ahead of me on this, uh, but as I understand it, there is a, a relatively um, informal, nonetheless, uh, uh, you know, together uh, kind of coalition of the Western states um, that are banding together to apply their own um, expertise, their own views, their own questions uh, to the, the, the questions that we all have as to a vaccine uh, uh, overall, you know, safety and then production distribution, fairness, uh, cost, et cetera. I'm not sure Hawaii has uh, yet become a part of that uh, consortium, but um, I certainly think it's, if not, it's worth uh, us taking a look at. So Mr. Speaker, I'll stop there. Uh, thanks again for the time. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Congressman. Are there any questions or comments for uh, Congressman Case? I do. This is Tina from Retail Merchants. Okay, Tina. You know um, the discussion has always been to have first line responders get the vaccine first, and we're all for that. And we understand because they're out there every day. Um, but another thing that we should also consider is also uh, retailers, because we are on the front lines, too, servicing a lot of our customers, whether it's food or apparel, too. So I just want to put it out there that it's something to consider that to put us um, up there with um, essential workers as well. Thank you. I mean, I think that, uh, Tina, thank you, um, and completely understood. I, uh, again, uh, Dr. Char may be able to comment on this, uh, 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 will be able to comment better than me, but my understanding is that in on balance on many of these decisions as to kind of, you know, where to distribute and when and how and to whom is, is not being particularly micromanaged out of Washington, D.C. There's a fair bit of local discretion. So, so you know, obviously, in a in a place like Hawaii that is so dependent on travel and tourism, there may well be a, a far better argument for, for distribution earlier uh, to folks in that industry as opposed to a, um, a, as a state that has a different um, um, overall um, you know, uh, situation. Okay, thanks. Yes. Brian, may I ask uh, Congressman? Yeah, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Congressman Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, you, you talked briefly about uh, uh, the extension for the spending deadline. Uh, what is the probability of that? Uh, we want to make sure that all this CARES Act gets to our people, um, especially in the agriculture industry. We're doing a lot of the food distributions, and some of the CARES funding did come a little bit later than we expected. So um, we know the need's going to be there uh, in December, in January, and February. But as far as the extension of the CARES spending deadline, um, what are your thoughts on that probability? Everybody agrees that the deadline should be extended. Um, that has been the case for a number of months now. Even the Senate uh, 500 uh, you know, million bill, which uh, many, many of us regarded as widely insufficient, I had an extension of that CARES Act the deadline. Uh, the, the question is, uh, whether the deadline is extended after the deadline passed, um, you know that that's uh, that's uh, that's a kind of a non sequitur there, and um, it's a statutory deadline, uh, so it's there's no administrative flexibility in it, um, and so that's the reality that we have. We have to pass a piece of legislation that extends that deadline, and we have to do it by the end of the year in order to have that extension, um, and so um, that deadline holds right now. Most of us want it to be extended, but we've got to pass something to get that done. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, though, um, when you when you described your own situation, the deadline that I'm talking about is a deadline uh, uh, for the state and local government uh, corona, coronavirus relief fund, which is in the CARES Act, the $1.25 billion. Um, the deadline is for the state and county, uh, city and county of Honolulu, and indirectly the other counties, to incur that money, meaning, um, as I said earlier, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, get it out the door. Um, 
if that goes to a nonprofit, um, that nonprofit does not have to meet that deadline for that fund. There may be other uh, uh, CARES Act uh, funds that that have uh, deadlines, and like I said earlier, there are there are you know it's a big old bill with three you know three close to three billion dollars of, of funding, seventy six federal programs we've tracked, um, and some of them have deadlines and some of them don't. So. Uh, there, there are, you know, there are cliffs in there, and they, and we've already passed some cliffs. Uh, for example, we passed the the deadline for uh, federal supplementation of unemployment insurance. Uh, that was some months ago that we passed that cliff, and there's more coming up. So, if we don't get a bill passed, uh, it it really is going to be a very difficult situation. Because again, I would say um, that that um, what I think we would all agree with, and that is that uh, the federal government is the only place that has the the size, the resources, and the capability to deliver this level of, of emergency assistance um, that is critically needed as we go into the kind of the third, the third wave of coronavirus across the country.